Okay, we are back. Let's uh, get back to our startup showcase. Startup showcase is a place where we bring in some interesting startups that we found or that have found us. And uh, we kind of present them here uh, just to give you a sample of uh, what is happening out there and what innovations are happening. So our first startup is uh, presenting is uh, Dr. Kathy Zhang from Toronto. Toronto. She's a physician, served as medical advisor, director, and consultant in digital health, entrepreneurship, and global health radiology. She co-founded and led growth of Canadian Association of Physician Innovators and Entrepreneurs. So please welcome, Kathy, are you ready? Hello. There you go. Hi, All right. great. Thank you so much, Julie. All right, you're on. You're 10 awesome. minutes. Perfect. So I also have here my co-presenter, um, Albert Hyde, who's the CEO of the company. Um, and I'll get him to introduce himself and um, tell a little bit about the history of hybrid care in a few moments. Um, so thank you so much for having me once again. It's such an honor to be here again among some of the greatest uh, physician innovators. Um, so my name is Kathy and I'm a practicing family doctor in Toronto, Canada. I've worn a few hats, but today I'm very excited to speak about the power of seamless clinical collaboration as a medical advisor for hypercare. Um, what I love about hypercare is that it solves very real clinical problems, and it does so with very intuitive, pragmatic, and seamless solutions. And what pain points are we talking about? So number one, secure communication between healthcare professionals. Two, real-time updated hospital-wide scheduling for each department and division. And three, figure out who's on call. And of course, I'm talking about the handwritten paper schedules that pager that many physicians still carry. Basically, the phone tag upon which our healthcare system rests. And all of this is absolutely unacceptable concerning the technology and tools currently at our disposal. So today, we'll remind ourselves about the gravity of these problems the solutions we have created, and some success stories within our client healthcare organizations. All right, so what's the problem? So the numbers speak for themselves. 14% of pages are sent to the wrong doctor. 40% of these were emergencies. We all know it, this is a broken telephone situation. So if we go a bit more in depth, so for problem of communication, in many places, the pager or some kind of ask on phone is still the only recognized way of reaching a physician on call. So any information that needs to be communicated, whether urgent or not, is via a phone call, which we all know can be extremely disruptive as it completely cuts your train of thoughts or actions. So to ease things, physicians often opt for more efficient means such as iMessage or WhatsApp. Even if we all know that we shouldn't be communicating about patient health information through these. But what you may or may not know is that the average HIPAA fine is $1.2 million. Now for the scheduling problem, I don't know about you, but at our hospitals, each department typically makes their own schedules on Excel sheets, sometimes handwritten and printed schedules or God knows what. And of course, they're, out, they're always outdated. Basically, very fragmented and the information often stays internal. For the third problem, figure out who's on call. Once again, I don't know about you, but I need to go on a hospital's internet portal after remembering three different, three different passwords to then opening the PDF like document. And of course, hoping that the schedule is updated, you know, sooner than three months ago. And then you realize, oh, I don't have that doctor's number. So you call locating and they ask you, would you mind holding please? And you say, with pleasure. I just have a medical emergency on my hands, but no big deal. I'll just sit tight and wait. And so now you wait and you wait. Oh, it's their pager. So now you leave your number. And now you sit by the phone and wait some more. It sounds hilarious, guys, but this is a serious problem. 
So now for some solutions. So first of all, for communication, what if I told you that there's a solution that's just like WhatsApp, but that's HIPAA compliant? It exists both as a web page or app, both iOS and Android. So everything you can think of, calls, texts, sharing photos, so ECG, imaging, patient healthcare number, and many other healthcare specific functions all embedded in one. So for instance, there is a stat button where the recipient's phone will start beeping even if it's on silent or vibrate. And you can even set your phone on unavailable and it'll be shown on the center screen. In other words, no notifications will reach you. And this has been shown to, sh to reduce burnout. Now for scheduling, how about if we had a centralized system that everybody has access to in real time? on the app or web page. You can see at a glance which shifts are not covered. You can see recurrent events. You can trade shifts with colleagues. You can drag and drop. Basically, it's as intuitive as Google Calendar and everything you could wish for in a collaborative calendar. And so this feeds in nicely with the locating or on-call piece. Very simple. There's one big button called locating. You press it, you choose a specialty, and only the on-call staff physician along with the student's residence fellows will be listed. You press the name, it opens the chat window, and you also have the, call, the option to call them. So no more phone tag. This is a miracle, guys. And in one of our hospital customers fully using hypercare, this has actually reduced 20% of calls to switch for year over year, in addition to reducing the number of pagers and pages and to reducing the usage of non-compliant messaging apps such as iMessage and WhatsApp. And not only that, we see a huge amount of physician satisfaction as well. Why? It's intuitive and it just works, as simple as that. Now I just want to show you the power of a simple but reliable tool. Because a piece of technology is agnostic, and it is all in how we choose to use it as a system or organization that gives it its power. So first use case, code team activations. So here we're talking about activating the code STEMI or code stroke teams after hours. Typically, the nursing lead needs to individually call everyone when it is activated. With Hypercare, the moment you activate it, everyone is alerted at once via text message. If after X amount of time that you decide within your own organization, say five minutes, the message is not read, the recipient will be called. And this will be done with repetition at set interval times. And the moment you acknowledge or read the message, this automated chain is broken. Second use case, automated escalations. Once again, very common scenario. You're in merge lock, you have an OB emergency, you just cannot reach the OB on call. Once again, your organization will set set intervals, will set the inter interval. So say after two calls within five minute intervals, there is still no response, then Hypercare will automatically alert the backup OB or chief department, however you set it. Another function that physicians have known to be very helpful, especially for QI, is the admin dashboard. Essentially, it provides you with data powered insights for funding, hiring, managing workflow, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, it gives you visualization on, for example, how many gen search consults have we received this month? Oh, maybe we should, we should hire more surgeons. Or why does this doctor not respond? Oh, maybe because they're busy in the OR at that time. So essentially, it removes the, he said, she said, I didn't receive a call. You don't have that many consults. Why does X specialty have more OR time blame game that goes around? Now, a little bit more about our reach. So Hypercare has already been adopted by 80 healthcare organizations across North America, from small to large hospitals to community health centers, long-term care, various mental health centers, and even prior practices. And here are what some physicians and other healthcare professionals have to say about why they love Hypercare and how this product just works. A few things I want to point out and that they appreciate is that number one, it is privacy protected. Number two, staying up to date on the carrier patient without it being disruptive to your workflow. And three, the ease and speed at which healthcare professionals can, can communicate with each other. In other words, we are finally communicating as if we're living in the 21st century. 
And here I want to show the impact hybrid care can have outside the walls of a hospital. In other words, collaborating and communicating with our referring, with the community referring physicians. As you probably know, a common question a family physician asks is, do I need to send this patient to eMERGE, yes or no? Now you could just hyper care the eMERGE doc and send a photo in real time of the investigations, the photo of a rash, whatever it might be, instead of, you know, faxing it and praying to God it doesn't get lost somewhere along the way. And this was something super impact impactful during COVID times when minimizing unnecessary displacements was essential. So now let Albert speak a little bit more about the history of hypercare and the wonderful team behind it. Hi everyone, my name is Albert and I'm the CEO of Hypercare. You know, in order for us to solve this problem, I had to sleep on on-call beds. I had multiple uh, physicians as advisors and throughout the number of years, I've spoken to hundreds of clinicians. I realized one thing, clinicians really, really want to deliver the best care but the limitations of the technology was hindering the process. So in terms of leadership team, it's led by uh, me alongside many uh, clin clinician executives, as well as technology executives in healthcare industry with over 20 years of experience. And we're led also and advised by a lot of executives uh, in the States that helps us in understand the problems and the differences between the States as well as Canada. And that's how we're North American wide. And one of the things that I really did a, a, a number in research as well is to understand why the do we need to build up, something. Guys. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Judges, any questions? So uh, I'm curious uh, how your system uh, integrates with the current system that the hospitals may already have. Because, for example, you mentioned scheduling, and I can imagine that hospitals already have that. So do you have integration so they smoothly on board? You can stop sharing your screen. Thanks uh, for that question. So there's a few integrations we have natively. So we have integrations, for example, uh, through Active Directory. So for credentialing process, making it very easy for our clinicians to quickly onboard onto Hypercare without creating an account that can use a hospital credential. We also have done clinical alerts like electronic healthcare record alerts, and that's done through email integrations in the back end. Uh, in terms of scheduling, uh, the reality is actually majority of hospital systems don't have a central scheduling place. Uh, typically what happens is uh, each department, uh, like Kathy mentioned, Dr. Zhang mentioned, they create their own schedules on different formats. It could be Excel, paper, and they fax it to switchboard, like the call center. And the call center typically has a repository or maybe a database and put it in. So what we do in terms of our change management process when we go hospital-wide is we train the departments directly to put the call schedule into Hypercare. That was what I was going to ask is that you, um, ever, first of all, everyone has to be part of this platform to communicate because I mean, I'm thinking that there might be doctors that are, you know, private practice doctors that might work at some of these hospitals that are on the call schedule. How does that work? Yeah, great question. I think a lot of times we think about how do you mix the old world with a new world. And so we have like little concepts like this on Hypercare, for example, a shell account where a person can have a pager or a phone number. If they have like a, for example, if they don't have a smartphone, they have a flip phone, you can actually put them on a call schedule and their colleagues can page directly to the pager or leave, leave a callback number directly to their flip phone. And what's really interesting is a lot of our deployments, when we, when we deploy, we see a ton of physicians actually buy smartphones just because they want to be able to talk to their colleagues. Uh, but there's always a few people, you know, they hold up, they're like, you know, I'm about to retire. There's no point of me kind of like trying to learn a whole new system. And for those, they can actually work directly with the hypercare system as well. And is this a, uh, is this a SaaS model or do, um, how do you make revenue? Yes, it is a SaaS model. So it's a recurring model that hospitals pay for. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a per license per model that uh, we have like, you know, volume tier if it goes up. And then we also have a hospital wide model, which is based on bedside. So it's like unlimited license model as well, but it recurs in nature as well. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Well, it seems you have some amazing traction with AT hospital systems already being in your, uh, using your platform. How hard or easy is it to get new um, systems and new hospitals? Yeah, great question. I think uh, one of the things that's uh, challenging is probably that a lot of clinicians are going on to WhatsApp and using it for their own workflow, kind of 
finding workarounds. I think sometimes it takes a little bit of challenge of getting the hospital system, like administrators to understand there is a problem. It's really important to provide a better solution than just pagers, for example, for the healthcare providers. So I'd say it's like more of a risk aversion that's in general throughout healthcare. I wouldn't say just like our industry, sorry, with uh, just because of our product, but just overall with healthcare systems. Um, so I think as we enter the states, uh, what we have seen so far is that the states is a little bit farther ahead in terms of healthcare than Canada. So typically when we go in, we're displacing a communication app, we're probably displacing the switchboard console. So depending on how many systems there are, there's a decent amount of change management, and that could also uh, uh, put a little, a little bit of concern around that. But oftentimes what they see in terms of the value is that it can consolidate everything because a lot of times those systems are not very well integrated with each other. So they're like, yeah, switchboard uses this, but the clinicians have no way to figure out who's on call. There's a PDF here. And so there's a multiple systems we're replacing, uh, but oftentimes you see the seamless integration is really the, the aspect of uh, positivity around adopting hybrid care, yeah. Thank you guys. Uh, judges, are you ready to score? Yep. Okay. Thanks again, guys.